Welcome to a new DIY engineers video. In this video, I'll go over blurring, erosion, and dilation in OpenCV. I'll be using a Raspberry Pi, but this applies to OpenCV and Python in general. Now, I'm in the virtual environment that I've been using for this video series, and I'm also in the folder that we've been using as well. I'll start with blurring, and I pre-wrote some of the code, so we'll jump right into it. Now, I went ahead and downloaded this image of a deer, so we'll be using that throughout the video series. Now, let me explain the code a little bit. So I went to import OpenCV and NumPy as we've done before. I am read, you've seen me done before. I specified the folder. It's in the imgs slash deer. That's the name of the file. I'm resizing that. This is optional. I'm doing it so I can move a little bit the images a little bit easier in the screen without having to resize a bunch of them. You don't have to do that. And then we'll start with blurring and we'll do an average and we'll do an average blur, Gaussian blur and bilateral blur. The average is just basically using a kernel size, which is a matrix, it's three by three, and it's gonna be averaging out uh, whatever you have in the pixels surrounding the pixel that you're gonna be blurring or not. And it's using that surrounding value of pixels to take an average and determine that how much blurring we get. On the Gaussian, instead of just taking an average, it's a standard deviation, which will be defined by this using a standard uh, normal distribution. And this is the kernel size of what to include in the range for such uh, distribution. And then we have the bilateral blur that looks at a few more things. So before I explain that one, just know that on these two, increasing the kernel size, those three by three, you could do five by five or seven by seven. A larger kernel size would increase blurring. You will get loss of detail, but you also get a smoother transition. Also, the larger the kernel, the more computation you have to do, right? There's more numbers per matrix to be included. And, you know, you have to swipe that all throughout the images. So it, there's a performance impact, right? It takes longer to compute. So you get more blur, but the cost is losing more detail and it takes a little bit longer. Now, let's go with the bilateral. It's a little bit different, as you can see. Uh, instead of a kernel, we specify a radius. And then we have two more values, which are the sigma color and the sigma space. The sigma color, basically has an effect on pixel intensity. So it determines how sensitive the filter is to differences in pixel intensity, whether it's color or grayscale. Uh, a higher value on sigma color, basically pixels with more intensity differences will influence each other, leading to more noticeable blurring. And lower sigma color, the filter will only blur pixels with similar intensities. Preserving sharp edges more effective. Now sigma space, basically it's the effect on spatial distance. So this controls the extent to which spatial neighborhood, so the proximity of pixels, is considered when blurring. The larger the sigma space, the farther that away pixels will contribute to the blurring of a given pixel. So the higher the value, basically means that pixels are spatially farther from each other, are included in the blurring process. And lower, the blurring will be more localized. So in summary between these two, Sigma color affects how much pixels with different intensities influence each other. And space affects how far apart neighboring pixels can be to still contribute to the blurring. By adjusting both of these parameters, the bilateral filter can smooth the areas of the image while keeping the sharp transitions, such as edges, intact. So now let's talk through the differences of the three that we're going through here. So averaging, it's a simple averaging of pixels. Gaussian is weighted based on a Gaussian distribution or normal distribution, and bilateral considers both proximity and intensity. From an edge preservation, averaging is poor, Gaussian is moderate, bilateral is high. Effect is uniform blurring, loss of detail. Gaussian is smoother with less loss of edges, and bilateral is smooth while preserving some edges. So averaging is best used for noise reduction. Gaussian is general smoothing or pre-processing before other computations. And bilateral is edge preserving noise reduction. So each one serves a different need. Let's go ahead and test them now. So I'm gonna go here and run that. So let's see, bilateral over here, plus average, the original at the top, let's open this one up. All right, you can see the original, pretty clear. And you can see the very difference in blurs, right? This is more generic. You can see, especially here, like in the trees, um, there seem to be some Gener generic blurring, whereas here it's a little bit clearer and the, and the edges are crisper. And then here, honestly, it's a little bit hard to notice the difference versus the original. I would say the main thing is like maybe here, this side of the leg, like here is sharper, whereas here is more blurred and maybe some here in the trees. But like when you compare it across the other blurring, this one kept the edges very well. Anyways, you can see the difference in the three methods and all of them we got some blurring. All right. Now let's go to erosion and dilation. 
Erosion and dilation are two fundamental morphological operations in computer vision. These operations help with noise removal, shape refinement, feature extraction, etc. Uh, so for example, you, you might have seen in the prior video that I showed where we did some, where we identified the green ball, we use this. So let's go with erosion first. So basically a structure in kernel will slide over the image similar to what we did with blurring. Erosion will erode what's in the foreground, right? Not in the background and it will shrink the object's boundaries, basically. Dilation will do the opposite. It will expand the boundary. So let's go ahead and, and test some of this. So we'll do erosion. Here I'm gonna define a kernel equals, so numpy once, so a bunch of ones, we'll say five, five, and then numpy.uint8, and we'll do erosion equals cv2.erode. We'll pass the original image again. Actually, it'll be better if we do something a bit simpler so that you can clearly see the effect. So let's just define a new image. So img underscore two equals, let's just say, we'll do a black screen similar to what we did in a previous video. We'll add some text. So I'm creating a black image, putting text over it. We'll display that image. We'll call this original. And I guess for this, I'm just gonna hide all this stuff. Call it original too, in case I ever sh decide to show the other images as well. We'll pass IMG2. All right, so with that, the erosion will just be based on that image too. We'll pass the kernel and we'll do the iteration. So we're just gonna do one pass of erosion. You could do more if you wanna erode more, basically. And then we'll just display the image. All right, let's run this. All right, had an error. Forgot to put the CV2 in front. So I saw this. Let's run it. All right, so you can see here that basically this lost a good amount of thickness, right? This is the original. This is less thick. We erode it away. If I wanted to bump up the erosion, let's make this three. There you go. We kept eroding away from the image. Let's change it back to one. And then let's try dilation. So dilation equals CV2 dot dilate. And then I'll pass the same parameters. And then we'll display the new one. We'll call this dilated dilation. Save it and run it. All right. So original, erode it. And then you can see here dilate it basically grew in size. Now finally, let's go ahead and run erosion on the dilated and dilation on the erosion to see where we net out. So we'll do erosion, then dilation. So for this one, we'll call it arrow dil equals. So let me just copy this. And instead of passing this, right, I wanna pass erosion. And then I'll just call this arrow dil and we're passing arrow deal. And then we'll do dilation, then erosion, deal underscore arrow equals, so we're doing erosion. So I'll just copy this. We'll put dilation here and we'll display that image. Save it and let's run that. Oh, sorry, let's try that. So let's check what happened. All right, so the dilated one, got the original one. The dilated one started original, got bigger, and we brought it back down. And you can see here, there was a gap originally between the Y and the I, and that now got cut, kind of bridged. Other than that, there's not much difference. There's a little bit of gap closing here in the end, right? Like it used to have a more accentuated corner in here. Now it doesn't. Same thing here. So you kind of see the effect of dilation followed by erosion. And now we can look at erosion followed by dilation. I'm gonna be honest, I don't notice much of a difference. We could go ahead and let's crank up all the numbers to twos. We'll see what happens. Dilation, you can see now it's huge. And then I wrote it back and now some gaps got even closer more, even between E and N, the G here. I mean, that's, that's, an, that's undesirable. That's not what we want at all, but it's just to make the point. And then erosion, followed by dilation, you can see you got eroded much more. And then we got this, which we can compare versus the original. 
and honestly I still don't see a difference but I could be missing some smaller details but you get the point and you can see how they can be used so this concludes the video I hope you liked it if you didn't give us a thumbs up and subscribe see you in the next one bye